Hi and welcome to The Running Channel, I'm Anna and today along with Kate and Rick we are going to be discussing one of the most talked about things to do with running and it's usually asked by non-runners. In fact, at The Running Channel we'd be willing to bet our favourite pair of trainers that at some point somebody said to you about your favourite hobby, hang on, isn't that bad for your knees? In fact, if we had a pound, nickel, dollar or dime that every time someone had said that to us we wouldn't be YouTubers, we'd be living on our own private Caribbean island. So today we're going to take a look at this question and provide you with some answers based on science. But in the meantime, if you're new around here, hit subscribe and tap the bell icon and you'll be notified when we upload new videos, which we do every week. I think it's fair to say that when people ask is running bad for your knees, what they're actually talking about is your future knee health because they assume that by doing all of this running, you're going to end up with terrible, painful knees when you're older. What they're actually talking about is osteoarthritis, which is a condition which wears away the cartilage in your knee joints. Well, first up, if you have arthritis already and zero cartilage left in your knees, then yeah, running is bad for you. But running does not cause osteoarthritis. Let me repeat that. Running does not cause osteoarthritis. To be fair, you can see the logic even if it isn't true. Pounding the pavement must be putting your knees under so much stress. It must be so bad and wearing away the cushioning like it does the bottom of your trainers. However, your knees are designed to absorb the stress of running. So in fact, it all works out all right. Need some evidence? No problem. In a recent study of loads of people, in fact 75,000 runners and 15,000 walkers, it was found that runners are significantly less likely to get arthritis than walkers were. Actually, half as much. So in fact, one of the authors of this study, Paul Williams, suggested that one of the reasons this might be is that runners tend to have a slightly lower BMI than walkers. And the most significant risk factor in causing arthritis is a higher BMI. In fact, in this study, the runners who did more mileage were less and less likely to get arthritis. Again, that might be because they tend to be leaner, or it might be the fact that uh, regular exercise actually has a protective effect on your joints, or it might be both those things together. Of course, there are other knee issues other than arthritis, and we all sometimes get soreness and pain and discomfort from running right, but well, one of the most common issues is runner's knee or patellofemoral pain syndrome. This is when your patella, or kneecap, is not tracking properly, and it can be caused by some of the muscles around the kneecap being too weak and they then need building up, or it can be an inefficiency in your stride, or a problem with your biomechanics. So the key here is that running itself isn't bad for your knees, but running with bad technique, for example, if you've got muscle imbalances or weaknesses, well, that can be bad for your knees. So the key here is to identify any of these imbalances or weaknesses with a professional, maybe a physiotherapist, for example, and work on strengthening them to then avoid getting knee pain. Now, we are not medical experts here, but we can give you some guidance and some tips so that you can take a look at yourself and see if you have any of the common weaknesses that can lead to knee pain, and then try some standard, uh, simple exercises to see if you can help improve that. Let's start with a really simple one. Stand in front of a mirror and do a single leg squat. There are three key things to look out for. Firstly, keep an eye on if your knee is collapsing inwards. Ideally, it should go over the top in line with your toes. The next is your foot and ankle. Correct that if that's collapsing inwards. And lastly, your hips. Keep them level. If you're unsure on how to do that, use your index finger on either side as you drop. Arch collapsing, your knees rolling in or hip drops are all common weaknesses and actually they can all be caused by each other as well. So some common causes for these weaknesses include having a weak tibialis posterior muscle, so that's the one that controls your pronation, having a stiff big toe or having uh, weak or poorly activated glutes. So we need to spot these issues and strengthen and correct them. Now obviously the best person to talk to is a physio, but there are some simple exercises that you can do in your own home that might help. First up, a single leg squat looking in the mirror. You look in the mirror to make sure that your knee doesn't fall out to the side, your hips collapsing, you want it to track properly over your foot. 
Then you can try an exercise for glute strengthening with a resistance band. Uh, for that, you want to move your leg backwards and out by 45 degrees, pulling on the band and gently back as you go. Finally, you can try stretching your big toe. You can try doing this up against a step or by doing it on a golf ball or a similar size ball, again, just in your own home. Those are just a handful of exercises, but there are loads of additional ones you can try. It's great to stay strong in all areas to help with your running. But to say that runner's knee proves that running is bad for your knees, well, shin splints are painful, as is an aching IT band, as is a torn muscle. And nobody says running's bad for your IT band, do they? No, they don't. Surely not. Injuries happen. So where do shoes fit into all of this? Will more cushioning support your knees better? Well, I mean, shoes can help, especially if they fit you properly. And poor fitting shoes, well, yes, they can definitely cause more problems. So first up, supportive shoes. These try to combat overpronation, where your foot rolls inwards too much, by having a stiffer bit of foam on the inside. Um, that's called a medial post. Now, a good running shop should be able to look at the way you run and work out if that's the case. But overpronation shoes are not a good idea if you don't overpronate, because they'll actually force you to run in an in a uncomfortable style. However, for people who do overpronate, they can really help and stop that excessive rolling in your foot and, of course, your knee. Secondly, people talk about shoes heel to toe drop. This is how much higher the heel is to the toe. Now, a lower number often means closer to the ground and closer to barefoot. Racing flats often feel more aggressive and tighter to run in. But it's important that any changes that you do make don't make big changes to the size and the drop, as this can lead to injuries. Thirdly, there are vast differences in cushioning between brands. So for example, Hocker pride themselves on having a really thick cushioned sole. But for some people, that might not be good for them because it can increase your chances of rolling your ankle on a less even surface. But for others, they prefer having more cushioning because it feels more comfortable. Yes, running is a pretty high impact based sport, but it's actually those people who don't do impact based exercise that are actually putting their health at risk. And we know that what's much worse for your knees than running is actually not doing exercise at all and gaining weight. Now, the area of your cartilage that's protecting your joints isn't going to change depending on how much you weigh, but if you are a little bit heavier, then that impact that you're putting through those joints will be greater. So perhaps if you are looking to lose weight, then build up to running by doing some lower impact based sports first, which would be of more benefit. Now, when it comes to arthritis, we know that one of the biggest risk factors is genetic. And if you do have a family history of it, that's actually more of a worry than marathon training ever would be. However, if there is that family history, then don't worry. In fact, uh, studies have shown that doing repetitive weight-bearing exercise like running can actually help. It brings fluid to your knees, gets things moving, and keeps those joints healthier for longer. So one thing that you might want to point out to those knee skeptics is that running is great for so many parts of you too. So we all know that going out for a run can help clear your head, help boost your mood and can also help you deal with stress a little bit better too. And of course that's just the less measurable things. The actual measurable benefits to your cardiovascular system are huge. According to the journal Progress in Cardiovascular Disease, us runners actually live longer by up to three years than non-runners. And according to another study from 2014, it doesn't take much, just five to 10 minutes of moderately paced running a day can help slash your risk of early death from cardiovascular disease and many other causes too. So there you go. If you aren't predisposed to osteoarthritis or of a generally healthy weight and have had no major previous injuries or accidents, then running is great. If you have, then obviously running is not just going to magic it all away. But those people who claim that running is actually bad for your knees, well, they've either got a highly treatable case of poor biomechanics or they had an injury there in the first place. 
so keep on running and keep those knees healthy. Have you ever been told that running's bad for your knees? We bet you have. Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you want to find out some other ways in which running can be good for you, check out our video, What Happens to Your Body When You Start to Run. And we will see you next time on The Running Channel. Bye. <laughs> He's still filming. <sighs>